Come on, Gracie. You gotta say morning to the Trainiacs. Morning, Trainiacs. There she goes. I had a moment earlier this week in a workout where it was a hard, hard bike workout and I ended up getting about halfway through. I completed three of the five intervals and I was out, done. And I just had this quick little moment of like, why can't I do this? Why can't I do these killer workouts and suffer in the workouts like I was able to over the last couple of years? Like I'm feeling better, I'm feeling healthier and just had this epiphany like right away right away might be a stretch because it's taken me uh how many thousands of videos have we done to come up with this my dad used to talk about this concept in business when i worked for him he owned a manufacturing company making custom cabinetry like high-end fancy houses and he said that you can get two of three qualities and you can't get all three at once you can get a cheap price you can get good quality or you can get it quick and there's no way that you can get all three unless you're dealing with a company that's gonna be out of business really soon. And the epiphany that I had was that there's something really, really similar in endurance sports and how we balance everything with our lives and not knowing this, I think that's what ended up giving me that little moment of like, why can't I do this? And I figured I'm gonna draw some things on a whiteboard here and try to impart that to you because I think hopefully it'll help some people put into context why you might not be performing as well as you want or why things just seem really chaotic and you can't actually get a handle on it. Let's go in here. Gracie, what do you say? You and me? Come on, Grace. The people love you. Gracie. Come here, Grace. You don't care. Oh, oh. There. There. All right. So we are going to pull out some time on the whiteboard here to explain what I'm talking about. Is this? Right there, is that low centered? So here's the epiphany that I had. There are really three main things that an athlete or a person has to balance when they start getting into triathlon. And the three things, let's see if uh, we can do this so that you can actually see it, is real life and this, you might say like, well, yeah, duh, there is gonna be real life. But there is nuance to this. So you have to balance real life. This being family, work, hobbies, volunteer commitments, just real life. Then, over here, we've got sports. We've got endurance performance. And then over here, we've got health. The epiphany that I had is that you can really only excel at two of these things and that's going to make the other one just by nature suffer. So let's start by taking a look at people who focus on endurance sports performance and health. Who are these people? Well these are what you would think of as pros. These are people who sports is their main role, that's their main focus. And because they're focusing solely on sports and health, almost everything else takes a back seat. You see pros that don't really work a whole lot. I've tried to be friends with a lot of pros, I am friends with a lot of pros. Because you're so concerned about your nap and your afternoon coffee and your second workout and your third workout. And everything becomes about sports performance and then recovery and not doing a whole lot so that you can stay healthy, but real life tends to suffer for these athletes. This is actually where I was in say 2018 and 2019. The business hadn't really become very busy at that point. I took a heck of a lot of naps. I got most of my work done early in the morning because besides doing these videos and a podcast and a post here and there on Instagram, I was still just kind of figuring out what the business would be, but it's not like we had employees, so I could control the business a lot better. This is where I was. I stayed healthy, I was lean, I felt okay, and I performed really well. I'd had my best times over those 2018, 2019 years because I kind of lived like a pro, and while the business was, yeah, fairly busy, but relative to other people who have kids and jobs that control them, I didn't have that. This is where I was during that time. Next, let's focus on the athletes who need to focus on real life and want to focus on sports. This is where most amateurs try to live. And the reason for that is that vast majority of people 
have real life, they've got kids, they've got a job that they don't control, that their time isn't their own. It's nine to five or maybe even more, nine to seven or seven to five or six. They've got to shuttle kids around, you've got volunteer obligations, you've got hobbies that you want to balance, but then they try to burn the candle at both ends and perform really, really well in endurance sports. What you've got is a stressful situation with life, a stressful situation with sports, and what happens is that in most cases, health tends to suffer and take a back seat. And in a lot of cases, the amateurs that are doing this are doing it inadvertently, not thinking that they're sacrificing their health. Now, it's not to say that you can't have all of these are a better blend, and I'm gonna to get to how you can do that, but just by nature, because there's stress on top of stress, the health tends to be the thing that suffers. This is where I started living last year. In early 2020, I was trying to perform extremely well and had this big goal of qualifying for Kona. However, real life was really starting to kick in. The business was starting to get partners. We had developers all of a sudden, we had graphic designers, we had a rebranding to do, and I was sitting here confused like, well, why is my health falling apart? Well, it's because there was stress on top of stress and it was fairly hard to end up balancing that. Now, let's look at the little known area that a lot of endurance athletes don't know a whole lot about and that is the athlete who has real life commitments, work, family, hobbies, and they want to stay healthy first and foremost and endurance sports comes after. We are not good at this as endurance sports athletes. In my opinion, this is where amateurs actually should be. This is where I am now. This is where my mind is at that I wanna focus primarily on health and growing the business and contributing back to triathlon in more ways than just me getting on a podium, I still wanna be as good as I can, but within a reasonable amount of time. And I think that is where amateurs should live because who wants to be a 70, 80 year old triathlete who is immobile, who isn't strong, isn't healthy, has injuries all over the place, maybe has some stomach issues or hormonal issues, is just overall aged not so well because let's face it, what we do as ultra endurance sports athletes is not super healthy. It puts a lot of stress on our life. I think this is where a lot more people should focus and understand that this needs to have its time and a place and maybe just pick and choose and understand how you're going to have to fit this in. Now, depending on where you are, I think that there are ways that you can actually support the third leg of this triad here. Let's say you are in this spot where you're focused on health, you're focused on sports, but you don't want real life to take a real massive hit. Well, the ways that you can do it are focus on this at a time when your job is conducive to it, that your job allows for it, that your family allows for it, that you have the life situation that this isn't going to take a massive hit or be an additional stressor. Also, another way that you can do it is include friends in your training. A lot of pro athletes that I know of end up living here where a lot of their friends are also their training partners. And that's how they keep those social relationships so that when they get out of being a pro, they haven't just completely abandoned everyone. This is building training groups around you so that you don't just go and do nothing but perform in your workouts and nap, that you still have a real life afterwards. I did not do a great job of including friends. Now you can also include family in your training. This is something that NTK and I did when I was training for Challenge Roth, that for us to have a little bit of extra time, she would actually come with me on the long runs that I would do. She would bike alongside and that would be an hour, two, three hours a week of us just having a little bit of quality time, a little bit of tunes in the background. And that was a really, really nice way to have some good time together. Now, let's say you are in this position where you do have a really busy life, a lot of stress in there, but you still wanna perform really well and put a lot of emphasis into how well you're performing, but you don't want it to sacrifice your health. You can do that. In these situations, 
you need to do a heck of a lot of monitoring. You need to be very, very diligent about all of your metrics with things like inside tracker and blood testing through that company with things like monitoring your training balance to make sure that it is 80, 20, that you aren't pushing too hard, that you've got the vast majority of your training at low intensity levels. And then that 20% is really good, high quality hit training so that you've got that really nice balance. You're also monitoring things like HRV to make sure that as you're adding on both of these stresses that you aren't slowly making your body a little bit less and less healthy. You need to absolutely make sure that you are getting eight hours of sleep and that you are eating properly. You have to make sure that all of these systems are still in check so that your health isn't suffering. Finally, what if you wanna be more this athlete? I think these are the regular people that over the course of 2020, a lot more people realize that this is where they wanted to focus, but they don't wanna give up sports and they're struggling with how do they still actually perform well in endurance sports? Well, this is gonna be a little bit of a plug, but you need to look at getting yourself training that isn't focused on the concept of more is more or more is always better or you have to suffer to perform well. Our app is actually designed for these people to make sure that whether you've got four hours, six hours, eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, whatever you're doing, every single hour that you spend is going to be worthwhile. There are a lot of training plans out there that really just rely on the fact that you're gonna be able to train a whole bunch. And for that reason, because you're training a whole bunch, yeah, of course you're going to get better, faster, stronger. What we've designed our app to do is to be efficient, to get as much as you possibly can out of every single second that you're training. So focus on a training plan that's doing that. How does that look? Well, number one, it has to include strength. When you look at the data, there is no way around it, including strength into your training plan is going to be getting you more out of the hours that you spend than had you not actually included that strength. In my case right now, I'm only running about twice a week, but I'm including three strength sessions a week that are about 30 minutes a piece. And because of those strength sessions, I was able to stay durable enough that without training specifically for a 5K at all, I just ripped probably one of my top five best 5k times ever. Also, it has to be 80-20. No way around it. It has to be some sort of version of 80-20. What sometimes it's 75-25 or 70-30 or the pyramidal model. It's the idea that the vast majority of your training time is being spent at that low intensity pace so that when you hit the high intensity hard, you can hit it really hard. It's that low intensity base of fitness that's gonna allow you to get faster when you hit it hard because you're gonna be able to absorb it and you're gonna be able to push harder because you're fresh from that low intensity base. Of course, that's not to say that you can't have it all. You can't excel in all these three things. Some people actually do. Some very genetically gifted athletes who you just throw any sort of running at them and they get faster. Biking and they get faster. Swimming, they get faster. Some athletes are able to spend most of their time focusing on this with just a small amount of this and excel tremendously. Some athletes are also just really, really durable and don't tend to get injured at all or don't lose their health at all. Again, some other people don't have any sort of family commitments or work commitments at all and their real life is essentially like no stress at all. So depending on your life situation, yeah, you can have all three, but the vast majority of people that I see that live a common lifestyle that most of us adults have to live with have to pick and choose their moments. Now that gets into the final thing that I want to say. If you're sitting here going, well, Taryn, I don't want to sacrifice my health and I have a stressful life situation. Am I ever going to see what I'm capable of in endurance sports? Yes, absolutely. The thing that I want you to understand is that there's a time and a place for all of that. That sometimes it's a matter of shifting 
responsibilities around depending on what your life situation gives you and recognizing that that shift is happening so that you can support the third leg of the stool that is potentially going to be in a situation where it might suffer a little bit more. If you think about it, as we start talking about all training things and quantifying yourself with all your training data, it's all about understanding yourself better. And if we can understand ourselves better with the mindset of where we're positioning ourselves in real life, what we want to go all in on at certain times, and then what we have to prop up with some of these methods that I talked about, we're gonna be better off for it, and we're gonna be able to perform better in all three of those aspects. And it's only taken me, what, 1,500 videos to figure that out. And if you want a training plan that is designed for those athletes who want to be healthy while still having a real life, you can check out our training plans at app dot mymotive.com. So with that said, if you aren't already subscribed and you like people writing on a whiteboard with colorful markers, I'm super proud of myself. Hit that subscribe button below. Later, Trainiacs.